Hi, I'm Dan and welcome to my channel, Dan Does Space. Tonight, we're going to be imaging M31, the Andromeda Galaxy, with my refracting telescope. And it should be a fantastic night. As you can see here, we've got nice, bright, clear blue skies. It's been like this all day and the forecast for tonight looks really good. So I'd love for you to join me in imaging M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. Generally speaking, the Andromeda Galaxy is considered the beginner's target in astrophotography, but I don't agree with that and I'll explain why in just a minute. But I suppose for good reason it is a good beginner's target because it is very big and very bright. In terms of size, it's about three degrees across in the night sky, which I admit doesn't really mean much. I find it hard to imagine what three degrees looks like in the night sky, but if you could imagine the width of the full moon and putting six of those side by side, that's the width that we're talking about in the night sky. So it's really quite big. And in terms of brightness, well, even here in the suburbs, if I come out and give my eyes 10 minutes to adjust and let my natural night vision take place, then if I look at Andromeda, the constellation, I can see the faint smudge that is the Andromeda galaxy. So that's a deep sky object that you can see with just your naked eyes with no assistance. I find that pretty cool. So yes, it's very big and is very bright. So that's why it's so good to start off with, which is what I did a couple of years ago when I first really got into astrophotography. It's the first image I took and it was with this telescope and a DSLR camera. And I make a point every year of returning to the Andromeda galaxy around this time of year as well, because it's well placed and gets nice and high in the sky. But I will take a picture of the Andromeda galaxy every year as a means of doing a sort of progress check. Am I improving in this, in this hobby of astrophotography? Um, am I getting better at data acquisition? Can I take more exposures? Can I take longer exposures to pick out the fainter details? And then also, when I get the data off the memory card and on the PC, have I got any better in the last year at processing my images? I think it's good to benchmark progress against yourself sometimes rather than other people. Um, you know, you can invest in different equipment. For example, this time when I image the Andromeda Galaxy, I'll be using my monochrome camera with a, with a filter set. And this is far more sensitive to faint details and, and is cooled as well. So there's far less noise than perhaps what would be present in my DSLR when I last took a picture of this. So. Yes, the, the plan tonight is to go through ordinary RGB filters to build up a color image. And also I'll add a bit of luminance in there as well to try and bring out some, some fainter details and some, some more information in the spiral arms of the galaxy. And then additionally, something I haven't done before is I'll be using my hydrogen alpha filter here to try and pick out the really nebulous regions in the spiral arms of Andromeda. To see those star forming regions, I think it will add a pop of color and a bit of interest to the image. And hopefully, fingers crossed, it will be a much better image than the one I took last year. And then I'll have to seriously think throughout the next year how I'm gonna improve on that. Some of the images you see online of Andromeda are truly, truly fantastic, but they do have about 50 hours worth of exposure. And given, I mean, I'm quite lucky today with these clear skies. However, I'm just never gonna be able to do 50 hours on a single target here in the UK. And I have been a bit unlucky as well, because I'll admit this is the second night I've tried to image Andromeda, because on the first night, this happened. I have a cable that is a very trusty cable, it's quite flexible. And this is what I use to connect to my battery, to the mini PC. And I got everything set up and running quite happily. I was very happy. The, the guiding sort of analytics were very good. And so I came out in the morning after what I thought would be a successful night of imaging. However, I could see the telescope was not pointed back to its home position like this, like I tell it to when it's finished. It was actually all wonky and things had been pulled across and the battery was wonky as well. It had fallen over slightly. The cable was off into the grass. And I don't know if this will focus on the camera, if you can see this, 
but the camera sorry the cable has been chewed up quite significantly all the way through the insulation down to the wire and unfortunately a pesky fox decided to take a particular interest into this imaging rig and had wrecked the cable so unfortunately the the mini pc suddenly had a power loss and the telescope just stayed how it was after just a mere hour of exposure and i was really hoping for about eight hours so obviously i've ordered a new cable and we'll be trying again tonight additionally to that every time i have tried recently in clear skies one of my neighbors has decided to have a bonfire repeat bonfires day after day um so yes we've been a bit unlucky but fingers crossed tonight will be the night that we get a very good length of exposure on the andromeda galaxy so yes well, this is all set up it's not exactly aligned to polaris and not polar aligned it is pointing north though so i will come back later once the sun has properly set and once the first stars can't start appearing i will polar align this and we'll get cracking looping through those filters and capturing as much information as possible on the andromeda galaxy With all the images taken and stacked, I'm going to run through the processing now. So the results are RGB, luminance and hydrogen alpha images. The first step is to combine the RGB through RGB combination to end up with one color image. Once that's done, we need to run some gradient correction on here to get rid of nasty gradients from light pollution. Here's the results of those once those are subtracted. So it looks a lot better. I then need to color calibrate the RGB image against an astronomical database, like a survey database to make sure the colors are correct. And then run blur exterminator on these. So that's a deconvolution algorithm to make sure all the stars are correctly shaped. Afterwards, I then run star exterminator, which removes the stars from all three images so I can work separately on the nebulosity without affecting the stars. I then prepare the luminance image through HDR multiscale transform. This just ensures the contrast levels are as helpful as they can be when I come to blend them in later. I do a similar thing for hydrogen alpha, but it's called continue and subtraction. It just means we're going to be left with the hydrogen alpha data and not any of the red generic data. We blend those together, bringing the hydrogen alpha and the RGB together. We then load in the luminance as well. We do some color adjustments, you know, some selective color correction as well, making sure things are looking nice. And then finally, we do some last minute sort of curves adjustments here to bring out contrast and what have you. Just minor changes now. And then, uh, yeah, we recombine it with the RGB stars and I will show you the final image.
So that is my 2025 edition of M31 the Andromeda Galaxy. I hope you enjoyed my little chat there before showing you the image about my processing steps taken to produce the image and I hope you enjoyed looking at the image as well. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I hope you are as well and as you can tell the weather is not fantastic here at the moment uh, very cloudy very rainy it's been quite a while since i've had any luck with clear skies so i thought now would be a great time to just step over to the side here and i'll pop up my previous images from previous attempts at andromeda so we can as i mentioned benchmark my own progress against myself so this one here was taken in 2023 this was my first ever astrophotography image when I first got into the hobby. Um, I was so happy and proud when I took this picture. I was just so, so chuffed that there were some details actually in the image. Um, but I think we can all agree, huge room for improvement here. This was two hours total integration, total exposure time. So if I pop the 2024 one on next year, you can see there's a lot more going on here. There's a lot more color, there's a lot more detail. And in moving from 2023 to 2024, none of my equipment has changed here. I was using the same telescope and the same camera, a Canon DSLR. It was astro modified to hopefully be more sensitive to the red sort of colors in Andromeda. Um, but I think you can see there's a lot more colors going on here. So I doubled the integration time to so four hours. And at the time I was experimenting with the drizzling technique in processing. So I won't go into too much detail here about what that means, but in a nutshell, it means this 2024 image has twice the resolution of the 2023 image. Um, I thought that was really cool at the time, but after I'd finished it and had a look back at it on reflection, I think maybe a bit too much for what my telescope and camera could do. Um, it produced some weird blotchy artifacts like in the background and across the whole image that I was a bit too uh, too blindsided to see at the time because I was just so happy with this image. But looking back, there's definite blotchiness there that the drizzling introduced. I'm, I'm not too happy about that. And it, it really shrank the star size down. Um, and it's not really indicative of what the camera and telescope could do. So whilst I was very happy with that, definitely there was room for improvement, which hopefully you'll agree if i put 2025's version up i have sort of learned from that and learned that a two times drizzle is not the way to go for my setup so in this one i did a one times drizzle it, i think it does have an effect there is sort of debate online about that um but i'm really happy with how this image took, came out and i appreciate like the first one had two hours integration the second one had four hours this one has just under 15. so i'm not really comparing apples to apples there if i wanted to be strict on myself i should have the same set integration time total exposure time but you know i also want to produce good images so i'm really i'm going to push myself and i really tried a bit harder here to get more integration time it's not the longest i've done on an image but for andromeda it is and i'm really happy with how this came out I think the colors are a lot richer. I think it really benefits from adding luminance in there. I did try to add in the hydrogen alpha data here, the narrowband data. Um, I think it helps. I think it makes a bit more interest. There's certainly more color. However, that also might be its downfall. I might have overdone the colors. I am quite heavily colorblind, so I always struggle with the colors, especially reds and stuff. So, you know, astrophotography can be tricky if you're colorblind. Um, I think there might be a bit too much pinky magenta in there. Do pop a comment down below. Let me know if there is. Uh, happy to receive constructive feedback. Um, but yeah, I'm still happy with how this image came out. I think the stars look a lot better than having not been on a two times drizzle. They look more natural. I just, re I'm really happy with how this came out. So, so yeah, I've got three images there of Andromeda over the last few years. And I will plan on doing a 2026 version, as I mentioned, coming back year after year. Um, actually, I think it might be good as well to pop over here some, if I zoom in and have a look at some areas of particular interest. So there's one here that I've, I've put up. So I, I sort of zoom in and crop on to the sort of the dusty spiral arm in front of the core. Um, and you can see in 2023, there's, there's something there. You can tell there's something there, but it's not much color, not much interest. 2024 is better. There's more detail there. 
and again the stars look funky because of the drizzling but the the latest one 2025 there's far more detail here. you can see a lot more contrast between the dust in the spiral arms and the background and the core i think it's a lot more interesting to look at there's a lot more colors too i think the luminance data here has really helped us to bring that out and again like the core if i put the core pictures up here the core in andromeda is always really hard to get right um it's it's so easy to overdo it like like i have done in 2023 like there is no defined border around the core which i seem to have produced in the 2023 one it looks like a real defined star with an edge um so that's not quite right and in 2024 i think i did do improvements there but again i think i overdid it a bit it's a bit too bright it's difficult to see a bit of the detail around there but in 2025 I think I tried a bit harder to ease that gradient in contrast between the bright core. It is naturally going to be bright. Um, but I think I did a better job here. You can see a bit more of the detail, how that sort of dusty arm goes to, in towards the core. And finally, if I pop up sort of the dusty arms to the up to the north and east of up to the right of the core, you can see these spiral arms like in the 2023 one, it's, it's difficult to see what's going on you can tell there's something but it is tricky 2024 again a, a bit of an improvement but still still could be better and 2025 just just clearly a lot more going on there i think the hydrogen alpha comes out quite nicely in here as well again perhaps i overdid it on the magenta and the pinks but i'm really happy with that so so yes as i mentioned three images there I'll get ready for the 2026 one. Um, my plans for that one will again to push the total exposure time, get more detail. Um, definitely going to stick with the luminance. Definitely going to stick with hydrogen alpha, but hopefully I'll get more data on hydrogen alpha to really make those nebulous regions much clearer and more well defined. And potentially I might try and gather some oxygen data as well to see if there's anything there. Just a bit of an experiment, see if there's any blue bits that pop out there. But if you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and had a look at sort of me benchmarking myself progress wise and how I think it's important to, to do that to yourself rather than always measuring your success against other people because there's just too many variables, at least with your own sort of progress you have your own equipment you're using the same things or you know what improvements you've made like a new camera a new telescope so you can control the variables a bit more and really hone in on what you did and how that's improved your images over time so thank you very much for watching again and as always if you go stargazing yourself i wish you clear skies